event, and I've already had a very eventful day here, second day in the hospital for recurrent anaphylaxis. So let me tell you all what happened yesterday. I was at school, my last class had just finished up, and I had started breaking out in my rash, which is the start of my allergic reactions. I took some liquid Benadryl that I carry with me, didn't work, ended up needing my EpiPen. My professor had stayed behind to help, and another student who, she was a rock star, called 911, got John on the phone, coordinated with him, where they were going to meet and what hospital we were going to and um, she was the biggest lifesaver because the paramedics were very nice and respectful. Judd told them about my autism so I didn't have a traumatic experience this time. They were awesome. Loved the EMTs but they said it's policy they cannot bring service animals in the ambulance. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm going to call the ambulance company and just verify but anyways I was not in a medical state to argue with it and I didn't really know what to do with Harlow because I was there. Judd wasn't at my college campus, he was going to the hospital. So this student, who I barely know, I don't even know her name, was like, don't worry, I'm gonna take Harlow and follow you behind the ambulance and take her to the hospital for you and give her to your boyfriend. She was amazing. So student, I don't know your name, but you were a lifesaver, thank you so much. I will find a way to personally thank you. So anyways, that was also Harlow's first time in the emergency room, because when I have a medical emergency, Judd and I just tend to leave her at home because one, she's still in training and we can't give her the attention she needs, really. Plus, he wants to put all his focus on me and not worry about Harlow and I can't focus on Harlow when I'm having a medical crisis. But she had to come with us because we were going straight from school. We can't tell the like, ambulance like, oh wait, I gotta drop off my dog or, you know, the, the... So anyways, she came with us to the ER and did great. Phenomenal. So proud of Harlow. I didn't expect anything less, but still. It was a long day for all of us and she just totally blew me away with how well she did. So anyways, I met with Judd and Har at the ER and um, I ended up needing Epi again because the reaction just wouldn't stop so they admitted me. And this morning I had another reaction, like early, early this morning I had another reaction that required Epi and hence why I'm on oxygen now because my oxygen levels are just too low without supplemental O2. And yeah, again, we don't know what's causing these issues, uh, idiopathic anaphylaxis, chronic urticaria, which is a fancy word for hives, or mast cell activation disorder, could be all that, but um, if you watched one of my previous vlogs that says difficult immunology follow-up, you'll see what it is that we are working on right now towards treatment, and basically I need another opinion. Because my medical case has kind of evolved into something a little bit too complex for my doctors but in the meantime it's not like we're doing nothing we have treatment plans in place it looks like it's most likely mast cell so we've started me on something called cromulin nebulizer which I am about to do right now four times a day as a preventative it's a mast cell stabilizer and then come February I'm gonna start Zoller shots I've heard great things about both of these from many people although of course it's never guaranteed to work so Fingers crossed I get some relief because I can't keep doing this and I'm when Judd gets here after the Academy with Harlow today we're gonna have this serious conversation about medically withdrawing from this semester because I don't know if yesterday wasn't a sign I don't know what is but again big decisions like that even though it's you know my college education I like to have a conversation with Judd first so we will decide today whether I'm going to medically withdraw or not. Well, I'm doing my first cromulin nebulizer treatment in the hospital. Fingers crossed that it helps. So the cromulin nebulizer went well. Um, they first put it on a continuous flow and that actually irritated my throat and put me in a coughing fit. So then they just put it where it would only come out when I inhaled and that worked much better. I was told by the allergist that it could take a week or two to get into my system, so we just gotta give it time, see what happens. Hopefully we can get a cap on these reactions in the meantime with the usual IV Benadryl, steroids, um, and H1, H2 blockers that I'm already on and just hope that they obey. It is infusion day for my dysautonomia, autonomic nervous system dysfunction, where I basically, my ANS cannot regulate blood flow properly, and that's postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome is my type. so. I am hooked up to my infusion here, they accessed my port for me, and I'm actually on the second floor this time. I usually always end up, so here's how it goes with my past two admissions. I get admitted, I go to a random floor, first one was the second floor, and the second admission was the fourth floor, and now I'm back on the second floor, and then I have an 
anaphylactic episode and I get moved to the PC or the progressive care unit, which is one step down from the ICU where they have more observation. And um, unfortunately, the hospital is just so full right now that I'm going to be here on the second floor, but the nurses are really nice. I do miss my nurses in the PCU because they all know me really well, but um, that's fine. Uh, the nurses here are nice, so they're taking good care of me, and they, like, run as soon as I press the button because the reaction started. So what we're doing is using IV Benadryl as soon as the reaction starts to hopefully stop it progressing to, into anaphylaxis, but that has not happened yet, unfortunately. So... Hopefully they will become less severe as the day goes on, and now I'm just waiting for breakfast. Breakfast is served! It's my usual pancakes, bacon, breakfast potatoes, and cereal. While I got ready for the day, put my nighttime PJs away, put on my daytime PJs, and I'm wearing one of my favorite shirts that Judd got me. And so my attending doctor also came in. He happens to be my previous attending doctor for my last hospital admission. And he asked what was the plan because my last admission, our goal was to get me discharged so I could see my personal immunologist. And when I told him that she wants me to seek a second opinion out of state, which could take months to set up because she doesn't feel like she can really handle my case anymore, I think he looked disappointed. Um, I have a hard time picking up people's facial expressions and emotions because of my autism, but to me it seemed actually clear he was disappointed. That's not what any of us wanted to hear from that appointment, but I'm glad my personal immunologist is being honest at least. Uh, I did tell him about the Cromula nebulizer and the Zoller shots we're going to try in the meantime to stop these reactions as a preventative, and he agreed with that. He's the one who actually prescribed the Cromula nebulizer my last hospital admission, so I'm going to be doing that four times a day. Zoller shots just come February when my insurance is reinstated, and I told him that I really liked this hospital's allergist, which um, helped and consulted with my doctors my last admission, and I wanted to go see him as a second opinion. He said, I don't have to wait until I'm discharged. He can bring him here instead of just on a consulting basis, bring him here as a legitimate second opinion. I'm now his patient. So that's what we're doing too. So we're just doing all of my usual medications, the Cromulin, and now I'm waiting for the allergist to come see me, and hopefully I won't have any more reactions, but you know how these things go with the past two admissions and the pattern. It's I'm just going to pray, keep being optimistic, and keep my fingers crossed. And I'm tired, so I'm going to take a nap, eat lunch, and then when Joe's done at the academy, he'll be here with Harlow. Real quick before I knock out for my nap here, my nurse and doctor did discuss that they do want to send me to the progressive care unit as soon as a bed becomes available because there's just more observation there. Whereas here, there's just not enough hands-on care for my case and how severe it gets when I go into anaphylaxis. Whereas like here, I'm at the end of the hall in the back corner of a room, and at the PCU, you're right next to the nurse's station. So hopefully I can get moved there, and all the nurses know me there, which is awesome. So we'll see what happens if a bed becomes available or not. Well, as we had hoped, I am now in the PCU, Progressive Care Unit, with all the nurses who know me, and more observation and hands-on care, which is great. Here with Ellie, and just in time for lunch, which looks very tasty. I just got a sandwich, some cake, and this is my room. I am right next to the nurses' station. So, awesome. This has got to be one of the best parts of being in the hospital. If there are any good parts of being in the hospital, this cake is amazing. So I started having another reaction, but we stopped it with IV Benadryl. I took a nap. Then I got a call back from the head of the ambulance company because I wanted to clarify their service animal policy. And they said, unfortunately, even though a lot of the employees aren't happy with it, they cannot allow any type of animal in the vehicle, even service animals. So then I looked up the ADA American with Disability Acts law, and I'm reading from it right here. It says, question, must a service animal be allowed to ride in an ambulance with its handler? Answer, generally, yes. However, if the space in the ambulance is crowded and the dog's presence would interfere with the emergency medical staff's ability to treat the patient, staff should make other arrangements to have the dog transported to the hospital. So basically, they said they would, in the event that there was no one with me, like if I was shopping at Publix by myself um, or something like that, and there was no one to handle Harlow, um, like the student who brought her here then, they would call animal control and they would care for her until somebody could go pick her up on my behalf. But what they're supposed to do is provide an alternate form of transport to the hospital. So I will be doing some friendly education later down the road when I feel better, because um, it's really important that they know how to properly um, take care of and transport service animals and their handlers in a medical emergency. So that's that. I'm here 
Uh, like I said, I had another reaction, um, but it was stopped with Ivy Benadryl. One of my favorite nurses came to check on me, and I'm just relaxing here in the PCU now, waiting for Judd and Carla to get here. My third Promulin nebulizer treatment of the day. Hello, hello, happy dog. You're here, Judd's here, best part of my day. Hey guys. Say something. Say something. Your voice oh is my gone. <laughs> Sound like a hundred year old smoker. Yeah, poor Judd. Right Hippo. Hippo doesn't even understand me anymore. He's got to take care of me while he's sick and now his voice is gone. But Not from the sickness from new recruits at the academy. Yeah, he was being kind of like drill sergeant for the new recruits at the academy. I'm really happy when you guys are here. It was my spirits. So, anyways, here, why don't you take the camera so I can say some things. Judd and I, oh, Harlow's about to fall off the bed. <laughs> Harlow, lay down. Down. So Judd and I have um, quite a few important conversations to have tonight. We're going to make the final decision as to whether or not I'm going to medically withdraw. We're going to try and figure out what would be best with Harlow, whether sending her with some friends in Orlando, because it's not fair for her to be stuck home, you know, all day while I'm here. Or we'll sell her. We're not going to sell her. And then we're going to talk about if I medically withdraw, that gives me the option to go to Orlando with her and I'd be with my friends 24-7. Um, because, you know, Judd's at the academy and it can get tricky and it'd be safer if I was with somebody all the time. So, I'm just glad they're here. We're going to enjoy each other's company, have dinner together, have these important conversations. And then tomorrow, we will be updating y'all with the verdicts of these conversations. Which is not something I want to have to do at 20 years old, but important stuff like this has to be decided when chronic illness plays a major role in your life. Also, other adulting. Adulting. Adulting is not fun, but it's got to be done. And, well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining me on our shenanigans. Hopefully I'm not stuck here in the hospital too long. Just an update on how I'm feeling. Pretty drained, but uh, that nap after that reaction and Benadryl was very much needed. So, feeling a little refreshed from that. Fingers crossed for no more reactions. I have one more... Um, nebulizer treatment of the Cromulin for tonight and my usual meds. Hopefully we get a good chance to get into my system. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us.